In our last video, we took a look at network addressing and we talked about terminology and what portions of what network address made up the network portion and the host portion. Now we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper and we're going to see how we came up with this range for a class A, class B, and a class C and how we determined the number of total possible networks and hosts that we can have for each one of these types of networks. So for a class A network, the RFC states that the first bit of the first byte in a class A network must always be turned off. So that first byte equals 128. Therefore, if I was to add up the other bits in the octet or the byte, that would leave me a total of 127 or 127 for a total possible. So that's how we come up with the range for a class A being from 0 to 127. And I know we don't use the 127, that's for diagnostics, and we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Now the network class range for a class B. In a class B network, the RFC states that the first bit of the first byte must always be turned on, but the second bit must always be turned off. So if you was to turn the other six bits all off and then on, you will find the range for a class B network. And that would range from 128, which is that first bit. And then the second bit is always left off. And then if I was to add the 128 with the last six bits, that would leave a total of 191. And that's how we came up with that range. Network address for a Class C network. The Class C network, the RFC will define that the first two bits of the first octet always be turned on, but the third bit can never be turned on. So that's how we came up with that range. So the first two bits basically equals, if you was to add them up, 128 and 64, would start off that range at 192. And then of course the other bits, with the exception of the third one, would always, if they were always turned off, that's how we came up with the 192. Now if I was to leave that third bit off and add up all the other bits turned on, the total would be 223. Now we also have a couple of special ranges, class D and class E. So the addresses between 224 and 225 are reserved for these two particular classes. The class D is used for multicast addressing and the class E is for scientific purposes. Now here's some more information about class A addressing. The first byte is assigned to the network address. We saw that in the last video. The three remaining bytes are used for the node address, and we also learned that in our last video. So a Class A format is network, node, node, node. So now we're going to see how we came up with the possibility for all of those host IPs in a Class A. A Class A address, by default, is one byte long, or one octet, with the first bit of that byte reserved and the seven remaining bits available for manipulation. Therefore, the maximum number of Class A networks that can be created is 128. Why? Because each of the 7-bit positions can either be 0 or 1, thus 27 or 128. But the network address of all zeros is reserved to designate the default route, so we can't use that. Additionally, the address of 127 is reserved for diagnostics, and we can't use that one either. This means that you can only use the numbers of 1 through 126 to designate Class A network addresses. This means that the actual number of usable Class A network addresses is 128 minus 2, or 126. Now, each Class A address has three bytes or three octets. That leaves a total of 24 bits in those three octets for the node address of any given machine. Thus, there are 2 to the 24th power or 16,777,216 unique combinations and therefore precisely that many possible unique node addresses for each Class A network. But because addressing with the two patterns of all zeros and ones are reserved the actual maximum usable number of nodes for a Class A network is 2 to the 24th power minus 2, which equals a total of 16,777,214 possible node addresses. Now, for the exam, if they was to ask you, how many possible IP addresses can I have in a Class A network, you're not going to get tricked up 
because they're not going to show you 16,777,213. What they're going to show you is a number that begins with 16 million. That'll be the only number that begins with 16 million. So all you have to remember is that a Class A address can have 16 million plus host IP addresses. Now the Class B address, the first two bytes are assigned to the network or the first two octets. The remaining two bytes or octets are used for node addressing. So that format would be network network node node. With the network address being two bytes or two octets, each bits in each octet or byte, there would be a total possibility of 2 to the 16th power for unique combinations. The Internet designers decided that all Class B network addresses should start with the binary digit 1, then 0. This leaves 14-bit positions to manipulate. Therefore, that would be 16,384 or 2 to the 14th power for unique Class B network addresses. A Class B address uses two bytes for node addressing. This is 2 to the 16th minus the two reserved patterns, remember, zeros and all ones. Therefore, you have a total possibility of 65,534 possible known addresses for a Class B network. Now remember, I told you what to do and how to remember for an exam about the Class A networks, 16 million. Do the same with a Class B, and just remember that you basically have roughly 65,000 possible host IP addresses, and you'll be fine. Now the Class C address first three bytes of a Class C network address are dedicated to the network portion of the address. Mm, that would be network, 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 and that last octet or that last byte would be the node. And that would allow you that many hosts per a Class C network. In a Class C network address, the first three bit positions are always the binary 110. Three bytes or 24 bits minus three reserved positions leaves 21 positions. Hence, there are 2 to the 21st power or 2,097,152 possible Class C networks. Each unique Class C network has one byte to use for the node addressing. This leads to 2 to the 8th power or 256 minus the two reserved patterns of all zeros and all ones for a total of 254 node addresses for each Class C network. So that basically gives us some more information about the wonderful world of our IP addressing scheme. Now in our next video we're going to get into subnetting and we're going to see how this actually relates these bits and these bytes.